Yep, you read the title right. <laughs> yep, you read the title right. Sometimes I like to sing bass lines and scat when I play the drums. And if you want to see me do that, you got to stick around. You get it? Stick, sticks, the stick. No? It's crazy. Welcome back to another Jazz Drummer Q-Tip of the Week. If you're new, my name is Quincy Davis. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out my channel. If you enjoy this lesson, which I know you will, go ahead and press that like button and subscribe. I put out a lot of lessons that many drummers all over the world have found helpful, and I think you will too. So the main reason I'm doing this video is because the last lesson I did on singing, um, everyone was so into it, and I got a lot of great feedback. And more of you were into it, into the idea of singing than I was expecting. So, um, but I held out. I have to be honest. I held out on you. I didn't reveal everything that I do when I practice and how I incorporate singing into my practice. Uh, so I'm going to show you today how I sing bass lines. And in the, this is not all the time, but how I sing bass lines sometimes. And I also sometimes will scat. And the main reason I do that is to try to simulate a real situation of playing with a bass player or playing with a soloist. It kind of gives me a real feel, or a close to real, as real as it can get, uh, a feeling of playing with other musicians. So that's the main reason. Also, all of our favorite drummers, they sing. They sing great. But I don't want you to be intimidated by the idea of singing. My voice is, eh, it's not a great voice. It's, it's okay. I can sing okay, especially if I'm away from the drums. But the main point of this is to connect us to the music. And when we connect to singing and melodies, then it helps us get closer to the music, okay? So don't worry about how good or bad you, you do this. This is more just to encourage, encourage, encourage you to sing in any capacity you can, okay? This is something I do. You'll discover ways of, of singing and uh, ways of incorporating it that will work for you. So that's all that's important. So without further ado, if you're ready, if you're actually ready this time, we're going to get into this lesson. Are you ready? Well, let's go then. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to sing a bass line over a blues form, okay? Um, and sometimes what I sing will inspire my playing, right? And sometimes vice versa. But either way, they're connected. And that reminds me how connected we have to be when we play with a bass, actual bass player. So here we go. Two, one, two, three, four. Ding, dong, ding, dong, 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 Okay, so there you go. That's an example of how I might sing while I play, sing bass line while I play. Now, I'm going to show you how I'll start with a bass line, and then I'll just build into scatting over those same blues changes. And let's just see how that sounds. We interrupt this program to bring you this special announcement. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday. Hey, it's my birthday month. I'm going to celebrate in every video this month. Happy birthday to Quincy. Happy birthday to me. And many more. 
And now back to your regularly scheduled program. Oh, and happy birthday, Q. So here we go. So uh, we'll go right here. One, two, ah, ah, ah. Ding, do, 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 Okay, so as I said, this is difficult. Uh, I had a few moments there where, ooh, I was struggling, but I fought through it. The main thing, as I always say, form is everything. Even if I get off, my playing gets off, my singing gets off, you got to keep the form. The blues form is 12 measures. You can never miss that. You can never get lost. You always have to have that. So no matter what goes on within the form, you're cool. Okay, so there's an example of how I, I really scat. And sometimes, as you heard, sometimes I'm playing off of what I'm scatting. Sometimes I want to play something, and then I'll accommodate that with something I scat, right? So they're interconnected. They're connected. And that's exactly how we have to be when we're playing with a bass player. Boom. We have to be so in tune with every note they play. I kind of have a reputation with a lot of bass players I play that I hear every note they play, and I try to make sure that my time, my quarter note, um, really reflects the harmony that they're, that they're putting out, right, that they're playing, the note choices. And same thing with soloists. We have to be so connected and in tune with what they play that what we play supports everything that they do. And sometimes we uh, support them. Sometimes we look, give them a little nudge, right, give them a little nudge. Um, and then that'll inspire them. So it's like a constant back and forth symbiotic kind of relationship. So there you have it. OK, hopefully you weren't uh, you're not uh, intimidated by the idea of trying this. It does not hurt to try. Remember, in the practice room, it's just you. It's just you. Right. So you don't have to put out a, <laughs> a YouTube video for thousands of people around the world like I'm doing. But I'm doing this hopefully to encourage you to at least try it, to get out of your shell, okay? So that is the lesson. Have fun. As they say in Japanese, gambatte, try hard. Um, and as always, right, practice hard, but practice smart. See you later. Take care. Bye-bye. Ooh,